Today I'm going to talk about some questions that I'm sometimes asked about Maximum ZS and I'm recording this video live so if anybody has any questions you can ask me in the chat and if you're watching after the video has recorded uh, please let me know in the comments in the usual way. Um, hi everyone how are we all doing? I uh, hope everybody can hear me okay as I say this is another live video that I'm doing on my channel. Um, so one question that I have heard a couple of times when it comes to ZS is what does it mean if the ZS that we measured on site is lower than the R1 plus R2. Now, as you know, the ZS is equal to ZE plus R1 plus R2. So the ZS should be higher than the R1 plus R2. The thing to bear in mind is that when we measure the ZS on site, all the protective bonding conductors must be connected. So this means there may be parallel paths that can be present that affect the result of the loop impedance test and make the readings appear lower than what they otherwise might be. Another thing to bear in mind is that when we test ZS on a circuit that's protected by RCD, one method that test kits use to carry out the test without tripping the RCD is by using a lower test current than we test the ZE at the origin. So this can also affect the accuracy of the test. So if we find a ZS value that doesn't look right, what I would do is compare it to the measured value for R1 plus R2 and the ZE for the installation. We can calculate the ZS for each circuit by adding the measured R1 plus R2 to the ZE for the installation. And this should tell us what the ZS should be and enable us to make a comparison. I think if we think back to the sequence of electrical tests, the continuity of CPC is always the first test that we carry out. So we should have a value for a measured R1 plus R2 before measuring the ZS. So we should be able to do the calculation ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. We can compare and we can compare this to the measured ZS. I think it's also important to note that whilst we can calculate ZS by adding the ZE to the R1 R2, it's not possible to accurately determine the R1 R2 by subtracting the ZE from the ZS. Even though this might make sense mathematically, in reality, it doesn't work because the ZS measured might not be accurate due to the possibility of parallel paths, as I mentioned a moment ago. So it's important to test the ZS and be able to compare the results to the measured R1 plus R2 that you measure at the very beginning of the electrical testing process. So I'm just getting some comments. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi everyone that's just joined us. No, OK, so. It's possible to calculate the R1 plus R2 if you know the length of circuit, and I explain this in another video on my channel, and I'll put uh, a link in the description below after I finish recording. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. Um, however, when carrying out electrical testing, we would still measure the R1 plus R2 when carrying out the continuity of CPC test, which is at the very start of the testing procedure. So it's also important to bear in mind that we need to regularly check the accuracy of the electrical test equipment as well to make sure that we are getting accurate test results. So if you ever notice unusual test results um, and you're not sure why, then it's really important to uh, check your test equipment against a known source just to make sure that you're not getting any unusual readings and that you can check that out with the manufacturer if there are any tests, um, if there are any issues with the testing at all. So those are my thoughts on this question. I'll be really interested to hear if anybody has any thoughts on this. Um, just notice a couple of comments. Evening, everybody. Hi, Gary. Hi, Mike. Um, hi, hi, everyone. Hope we're all doing okay. Hope you can hear me okay. As I say, this is another live stream that I'm doing um, here on my channel, just recording um, the video that I had planned for this week live. So I hope, uh, hope it works okay. I hope you can all hear me okay. I know the uh, the audio and the, uh, uh, the video quality might be a bit different. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so, yeah, so that's one question that I sometimes get about maximum ZS um, that sometimes comes up. If you notice the, um, the ZS appears lower than the R1 plus R2, then it's important to check that you can, important to be able to compare that with the R1, R2. Um, so I hope that is useful for everybody. I hope that makes sense as well. Um, one thing that I, I would, would watch out for is if the R1, R2 looks very high. I, I always... It's interesting to note that the R1 plus R2 is on the certificate. It's next to where the maximum permissible ZS is, is recorded. So always make sure that the R1 plus R2 is not higher than that, because if that's the case, then it wouldn't work. You wouldn't get a disconnection, um, automatic disconnection if that were the case. So it's always important when you measure the ZS to always compare it with the R1 R2 and to make sure that it's not going to exceed maximum disconnection time. Now, one 
obvious thing to bear in mind as well though, is if you've got RCD protection as we usually will do these days then obviously that can be used for um automatic disconnection but it's, it's still important to bear in mind um so let's see if we've got some more questions in the chat hi everyone um okay so we've got a question here um sorry i, I can't see your name there so it says hi can we pass the lighting circuit on the icr which has no cpc um that's an interesting question i would say probably not um for, for that it really depends if you've got um any uh if you've got all um plastic accessories in an installation and you've got no uh, cpc then that's not as bad but there's always the possibility that somebody might add metallic uh fittings you know class one light fittings which would make it uh make it a big problem personally i i would not pass that if it had no cpc in a bathroom i'd be interested in what other people think um that there's an installation of that age where you don't have CPC in the lighting, um, obviously I think there's going to be a few other problems there. You wouldn't have any RCD protection in the bathroom. Now bear in mind, RCD protection is is required for any circuits that enter the bathroom or pass through the bathroom. Um, so, uh, so I would give that um, a code too. Also bear in mind that if you've got an electric shower, now RCD protection for electric showers has been a requirement since way back in the 16th edition when I started back in the 90s. So. RCD protection has been around for a long time. I know I'm going slightly off topic here, but um, just um, to answer the question, if you find an installation that's got no CPCs in the lighting, I think an installation of that age, you would be looking at, um, there'd be a few more problems I would expect to encounter. So I, I would say a C2 if you had no uh, CPCs, particularly in the bathroom. Um, hi everyone, hi Richard. Um, uh, Mike, uh, for me, that'd be a C2 or F1, no CPC. Yeah, I agree with that. Thanks Mike, thanks for your comment. Um, yeah, so I hope that all makes sense to everybody. So interested to read your questions. And if anybody's got any questions on EICRs or, or, or ZS or anything like that, please let me know. I um, hope that all makes sense. And there's another question that I've uh, seen crop up another time, which relates to a previous video that I made. Um, and that is, what do we record for VAX ZS when we are using an RCD for disconnection, uh, for compliance for disconnection time? So that is different to uh, what you get in Table 41.3. Um, if you turn over the page to table 41.5, you'll find a reading for Max ZS for RCD. So there are a few different recordings there, but if a few different readings there, but if you have um, a 30 milliamp RCD, the maximum ZS is 1667 ohms. So we can use the RCD protection for compliance with the disconnection time. Um, and so what I would do if you've got any ICR and if you've got RCDs, um, I would record 1667 as the maximum permissible ZS. And then against any RCBOs or uh, MCBs, I would use the values in table 41.3 for the maximum per uh, permissible ZS. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. That's another um, question that sometimes comes up and it's uh, relevant to a video that I did previously on my channel and I'll put a link in the description below. Um, hi everyone, got some more people join us. Um, glad everybody's um, able to join me today. Um, yeah, I hope, everybody, hope that all makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions, if you've got any questions at all about um, EICRs and uh, uh, Max ZS and everything like that. It's uh, really interesting to know everybody's thoughts on, on these topics. And uh, um, if you have any questions about EICRs, it's a question that's it's sometimes often pops up and uh, codes for EICRs as well. It's something that's often a topic of conversation. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts and uh, if you have any questions on that. Um, see who's... Uh, joining us now yes yeah, so there's a few few of you in there um yeah so so that was all i wanted to say really about maximum zs it's something that um it's something that really uh could have really, there's a lot, a lot of questions come up on that subject um hi mike um do you uh, do you not consider the installation of an rcd on a circuit with high zs just papering over the cracks. I personally do, but would like to hear your thoughts, James. That's an interesting question. Um, I think that it's important to remember that RCD protection is um, a permissible way of um, complying with a, dis with a disconnection time. And so if you had a TT system, that in most cases, that would be how you would comply with the disconnection time. I personally, the thing that I would do is I would be looking to make sure that your um, 
all of your circuits, when you measure the R1 plus R2s, and if you measure your R1 plus RNs as well, that they are what they should be um, and, and what that, what you would expect them to be. Um, I also think in, in, in the case of a, a TC system, and I know this isn't a requirement, but what I would do is I would always do what um, the NIC guys ask us to do, which is to measure your loop impedance between line and neutral as well as between line and earth. So that would give you um, a, a good indication as to what the short circuit current would be and if protective devices would operate within the required disconnection time in the event of a short circuit current. So I always think that's a good idea. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. Have you ever been on a um, inspection with your Compton person scheme and they ask you to do a loop test between live and earth and between live and neutral? And the reason for that, obviously, is that there is a there is a difference between what what reading you would get. Obviously, that a fault between line and neutral, a short circuit would be the 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 highest um, uh, fault current. Um, so prospective uh, fault current. So um, so yeah, I would always if you've got a TT system, I would always measure between live and neutral as well, and just to make sure that your um, even though it doesn't ask you to do this on a test kit make sure that the loop reading between line and neutral is sufficiently low enough that you would get this the disconnection on the short circuit, which I would expect that you would do. Um, but it's it's just something that I always think is a good idea to check, really. So um, to answer your question, Mike, yeah, I, I mean, RCD protection does comply with the, with the disconnection time, uh, obviously, provided you get a maximum ZS that's lower than 1667, and obviously, provided that the RCD itself works, of course. Um, so we always need to make sure that it's working okay. Um, but generally speaking, obviously, we would, uh, if it wasn't a TC system, and if we weren't expecting that the uh, RCD was going to be provided that, I, I would be looking for a maximum um, ZS lower than what it says in Table 41.3, but just to note that, if you can't achieve that, then you can't. Then, then it is possible to use the RCD protection for compliance with this with the disconnection time. So I hope that helps. Um, um, so, so yeah. So thanks, Mike, for that question. Thanks. I hope that um, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks, Gary, as well. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so that that's basically my thoughts on that. And it, it's a topic that um, that does sometimes come up. And, and I think it's somebody once asked me when you're doing an electrical test certificate. Imagine if you've got a split load board, for example, and you've got um, you're putting in your maximum permissible ZS for each circuit, and you're looking at table 41.3 for your MCBs or your RCBOs, and you're looking at those values there. When it comes to the circuits that are against the RCD, what you could do is you could put 1667 and then put the values for table 41.3 against the other protected devices. I think I think that makes sense, and uh, but it's just something to just bear in mind there. So yeah, I hope that um, I hope that works. I uh, hope that answer makes sense for everybody. Do uh, do ask me if you've got any other questions at all. Um, really, that's uh, the questions that I had um, in mind today that come up. Um, always interested to hear what you guys think, and uh, if you have any topics or anything that you would like to hear more about or any questions that you'd like to hear answered, then please do let me know um, in the chat or in the comments after this video. Um, it's always uh, interesting to hear from, from you guys. Uh, let's just see if anybody else has joined us here. Um, this is uh, the, only the second time that I've been live here on my channel. I, I did it last week on, on a previous video um, and just really just to try something different just to see if, uh, um, you know, how it works going live and uh, to see if we can get any questions while I'm, um, while I'm um, making the video. Um, and yeah, to see if it works for you guys. So do let me know if you like this format, uh, this format of me going live um, and uh, giving you guys the opportunity to ask me any questions as I'm recording the video. I hope it works. And um, uh, hi, Gary. Um, Gary asks, have you got any more videos coming out on the eFix YouTube channel? Yes, I have. Um, I've, uh, I'm working on a couple of videos at the moment, which I'm talking uh, to the guys at eFix about. So yeah, if, I'm sure that you guys watching my channel will, will know who eFix are. Um, and I'm sure that you're probably already subscribed. If you're not, give uh, give them a, a, a like and a subscribe if, if you're not subscribed to eFix. I do occasionally make a video for those guys over there, so I hope that you guys uh, see those as well. Um, so, so, yeah, I'm sure that everybody watching my channel is probably already aware of the guys over at eFix. Um, thanks for your comment, Mike. Glad you like it. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for letting us know. No, I really, really appreciate uh, the comments, guys. Uh, really grateful for you guys to let us know because it really helps to know what you guys are interested in hearing about. It's one of the things that uh, I think is, is difficult to know um, when you're making anything here on YouTube. It's, it's difficult to know 
what people want to hear more about. Um, and so it's really great to know that you guys enjoyed this video. So thanks very much for that. And thanks for the questions. Uh, thanks, Gary. Um, so yeah, so I think that's all I have time for today. It's all I had for, unless anybody's got any other questions, that's all I wanted to talk about. So if you have got any other questions, please let us know in the chat. And afterwards, please let us know in the comments. Um, if you're not subscribed to my, my channel already, please head over and subscribe. I've got more videos coming out. I try to create um, videos each week. Um, and so there's more videos coming and more videos coming over for the uh, for the guys at eFix as well. So uh, please give us a like and uh, please subscribe if you haven't all done so already. And I'll put a link to those other videos that I mentioned earlier in the description below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.